Thank you. Thank you all. Everybody. Thank you for coming along. I am a little bit surprised of this uh, impressive turnout and a little bit overwhelmed for the distinguished colleagues and friends that are coming here. So uh, can you hear me well back in the... No? So maybe I need to, do, to use both uh, microphones. This should work. But works okay so let's uh, talk a little bit about athletics first of all as usual i have to declare my disclosures no disclosures but i have a clear disclaimer to make i am a fan of athletics i practice athletics since i was 16 and i was involved in athletics in several uh, capacities one of the capacities is in sevilla 1999 i was already the medical director of the world championships so now next year 20 years back I will close the circle and I will be again medical director in Qatar and for me uh, it's a privilege and a huge opportunity. Don't read too much this because I will go into detail one by one. I uh, organize and structure the presentation with five sectors and I will go straight away with an uh, image that I want to share with you. So there is a problem with the sound but we can get rid of it. But play attention, to, play attention to lane number five, the guy running on yellow socks. Yesterday, sound was working. There's something. <laughs> so I want to share with you this video, because this guy, Nesia, inshallah, he will be one of the favorites in the 400 meters hurdles. And we will all looking for him to win. He is now this year the best 400 meters hurdles. He ran in this precise race, the second fastest ever race, and he's from Qatar. So we have to welcome him to the competition level. He, uh, this year he was outstanding. He did a beautiful performance. So let's go to the first sector of my presentation. So first of all, I think you need to know what we are facing with this competition. Athletics is a big sport, and the World Athletics Championship is the third biggest sport event, only after the Olympic Games and the FIFA World Cup. And this is very important to understand, because this is really big. This will be the biggest sport event ever organized by Qatar next year. So prior to this, only ASEAN Games in 2006 was of some high, high uh, level, but not this level. Also, this will be the first time ever in the Middle East. And this is important because so far it was only on either Europe, Ch China, Japan or Korea. So it's the first time that this competition goes out of the usual circle. And we, as Petar, we are proud to be the official partner for, service, uh, for medical services. So more facts, very important. You have to understand that AWA together with FIFA, they have together more nations registered than United Nations. So they have 240 countries registered in AAAF. So we expect to a lot of athletes to come, more or less 1,500, a little bit less than usual because next year AAAF is changing the qualifying system to come. But still, we will see the best athletes ever, we hope. And that means that if we have 1,500 athletes coming, we have to expect 2,000 officials, so team coaches, team administrators, physiotherapists, doctors, etc. <laughs> More or less 10,000 international guests, mainly journalists, a lot of journalists and TV crews, and also we will have a lot of VIPs, mainly because AWF organizes every two years its Congress, and the Congress will be held here two days prior to the start of the competition, so we will have easily up to 1,000 VIPs. And the actual capacity for spectators in the Khalifa Stadium, once it's adjusted to the media tribune, which uh, takes a lot of uh, seats out, we expect 30,000 spectators daily. And we all are begging and praying to pack the stadium so we have every day the stadium full. This is a long competition, 10 days in a row. We will start on 7th, 27th. Sorry, on f Friday, 27th uh, September. We will start afternoon and evening in the stadium in the same night. At midnight, we will go to Corniche. And this will end on Sunday, 26th uh, October. So we will have two competition venues, Halifa Stadium for all track and field events, and Corniche, where we will have at night, for the first time ever, 
marathon and race walking. And when I say at night, I literally meant it because the uh, starting time for marathon is midnight. It's at least 23.59, but it will be midnight time starting of the marathon. And the race walking will be uh, 23.30, uh, so it will be difficult time for the athletes, we understand. But this is a little bit trying to decrease the risk for heat, and I will come back to that later. Also important for us to understand that we have to serve these two competition venues, the training sites that will be the Aspart Dome, the Aspart Outdoors Track, and at the same time, Central in the city, the Qatar Sport Club. We have to serve the Atlas Hotels. We will have five, and this has been uh, adjusted just uh, 10 days ago, because uh, 15 days ago we were thinking to have two big hotels. Now we will have one big s down plus four more. So now we have to adjust a little bit our <laughs> operational plan. And very important also, because I will come back to this in a later uh, slide, we have to take care of the spectators' medical case. So we have to think that around this stadium here, in the spectators' entrance, that will be this side. Uh, there will be a fan zone, and also in the corner close to the finish line. So what should we do to prepare ourselves for this competition? OK, so we have to review the contract. We were lucky that the LOC shared with us, I mean, the plan and operations department shared with us the contract. So we are obliged to provide for free first aid in every single competition, training site, accommodation site. And what does that mean? Okay, so we have to cover all the accredited categories. That is obviously the stars, the athletes, their teams, a very important uh, group, competition, Offices, and we have here Del Hakim, that is one of the main uh, international technical officers for us, and he knows very well that we have more or less 300 or even more technical offices on the stadium, on the track, under the sun, or probably under the air conditioning in this occasion. Media, TV crews, the TV crews are huge. We will have here several TV channels working 24 7 because they have to send the TV signal at. Uh, local prime time. So if we have Australia or US TVs, and we will have them here, they are sending the signal at uh, 3 or 4 a.m. in the morning here. So we have to be ready to take care of them. A very important group, workforce, volunteers, staff, uh, LOC uh, workers, all these people has to be to, to care. Obviously, VIPs. And I can't forget a very important community, spectators. They are not accredited, but we have to take care of them. Okay, so when I started to take the responsibilities of all these big, big, massive operations, I tried to get information on the scientific literature. And unfortunately, it's very little. There's very scarce information. I only get two papers that are directly linked to, to past uh, championships. And you will see some figures. I don't want you to get into much detail. Sevilla in 1999, we were able to collect the data and publish, and Helsinki in 2005. But I would like you to draw the attention to the fact that there is a lot of uh, medical encounters coming from the spectators, from the workforce, and we have to take that into consideration. Even we are not experts in the care of the spectators, but we have to plan accordingly. Also, we got data from the last edition of the championships, London. And again, a very important data for you. You have to take this into consideration. So almost three-fourths of all the encounters were physiotherapy encounters. So we have to be ready for that. OK, don't panic with this busy, busy slide. I want to show you that this is difficult to get information, that each competition is reporting one way. So there is no consistency. It's difficult for us to understand what is a medical encounter and what Sevilla consider a medical encounter and what London considered. And the same for physio encounter or spectators numbers. So it's difficult, there is no consistency. So we have to guess a little bit on the data. And also I said, okay, I was a bit curious and say, okay, let's try to get information from the Olympic Games. Take into consideration that the Olympic Games is 15 days in a row, like, mm, no, well, 20 times or 30 times athletics, because there is 20,000 athletes registered, is 22, 23 world championships at the same time. So the figures are much, much, much massive. So still, for me, what is important for this is the importance, again, of the number of medical encounters, how many spectators are involved, and also the transfers. And I will come back to this later. One anecdotic reporting in Atlanta, we, they have three cardiac arrests. 
and I didn't find any cardiac arrest, but this is also important because we have to plan for the spectators what to do. So I did my guessing. So, okay, it's clear that this will be the biggest ever <laughs> operation medical cover by hospital. Very important because we are facing numbers that we never faced. Then, more or less, a little bit more than 3,000 medical encounters, most of them athletes, and when the athletes are coming to see us, they will complain about muscle skeletal injuries, and I will give you some figures now. A lot of physiotherapy encounters, and we have to be ready, we have to plan for that, because more than half of the total encounters will be physiotherapy, for sure. Another thing, important again, spectators, we have to take care of them, even we will organize it, we won't be there serving the, the spectators, we will have a couple of organizations, but we need to take that into consideration, as well as the VIP's requests and the media encounters. And for us, very important, we will have a huge workforce working 24-7, many of them, at the very unusual times. So we have to be ready to provide service to the workforce almost 24-7. And again, my prediction, this is a guess, again, I can be wrong, but we can have 50 transfer to hospitals. Of those, 10% more or less final admittances because they could be several things. I can give you an example. Sevilla 1999, Ethiopian coach, heart attack, my, myocardial infarction, and he stayed in the, stadium, sorry, in, the, in the hospital for 10 days and the team left Sevilla and we had to take care of him. So this could happen. And maybe, maybe, hopefully not, inshallah not, we will, could have one cardiac arrest. Anyway, high volumes, and we have to focus in three main places. Warm up in the hotels, there will be a huge demand, and also a little bit on the stadium. Let's go a little bit of how to organize yourself. So how you can strategically prepare your group and yourself to this. Okay, I think I am giving you a little bit of clue of what to do first. You, you should know the sport. I'm lucky because I know very well athletics. I've been involved in there for many years. But I still I have to do review the rules. Some of the medical rules are changing. I have to review and update myself. Important thing, to know the competition. So there is a lot of different competitions. This is a particular competition. This is the best competition. We should know how it's organized. I mean, there is qualifying rounds for the races. There is qualifying uh, contests for the jumps and the throws. There will be road races, a stadium. We should know the regulation of the competition. We should know the timetable. Now the timetable is published and you are freely uh, able to get to the AWEF uh, website and get and download uh, the timetable. And it will be mainly in the afternoons and evenings in the stadium. But we need to know that to, for planning. Impos very important, we should visit the areas. Uh, we have been already to the stadium, we have been to the hotel, we have been to the Corniche, and we need to identify what is the best place for our medical place. Also, again, and I already mentioned, you have to check check the bid commitments. So uh, Qatar took some commitments when the, we, we, we bid it for the competition, and we need to respect that uh, compromises. I already said there is very little scientific evidence around, and I could hardly get some, but it's important to get even if you have something. I think in this uh, strategic thinking, you should have a very good team. It has to be gender balanced, more or less, so you have to try to do. It has to be experience. <coughs> Also, very important that everybody has a kind of enthusiasm to serve the hospital, to serve the competition, because this is a unique opportunity. And maybe this is once in a lifetime for some of us. And then it's very important to delegate responsibilities. If you have a good team, everybody should have something, a particular area where is the boss, and I have to be, okay, you do this, I trust you, you do it. And insist that you have to be sensible so you can give to particular people too much responsibilities and duties and then others less because maybe they are more involved in other daily life activities. So this is also very important. And I want to emphasize the importance also of the teamwork. So we need the help of others. We need the help of the Ministry of Public Health here in Qatar because they are experts in the public health and I will give you a little information. We have the Hamad Medical Corporation ambulances and emergency services working with us already. And we have good experiences with them in the UCI World Cycling, in the Humboldt, in the IPC Athletics. 
and we have been working with them as with Catarrecesim for many years. So we need to rely on them and we need to make team because everybody should have their own responsibilities, their own uh, areas, and we shouldn't work in silos. And insist, your more intimate, closest uh, collaborators, they should know what is their job, what they should do, what they are expected to do, so everybody knows what is the main function. And again and then again and again, we should repeat, we are doctors, we have to think always on the worst case scenario, and we have to plan accordingly. And so we have to be ready for the worst. And this is the, our main task. And we, I think we did that quite well. Some of the issues that are key in organization when you are doing a strategy. First, to plan accordingly, to have time, to prepare time planning, and also to build up good relationships. Because we need to have excellent relationships with all the areas of the LOC. We have to work with sport, with venues, with plan and operations, with marketing, with media, because we are all working together. So we can't elbow each other and fight for the same place. We have to discuss, okay, maybe I have to, in this time, give you this space, but I will get another better place in another place, another moment. Also, it's very important to have good relationship with the local authorities. As I already mentioned, the Ministry of Public Health, Qatar Crescent, and the uh, Hama Medical Corporation. Also, we have to think that we have to serve a lot of athletes, invited people. So we have to prepare our medical equipment, our medical devices, uh, medicines. We have to plan this because we can uh, fail in that. Surveillance systems, health surveillance systems. So I will tell you a little bit more about this, as well as risks. And I insist also security. We already got two main meetings with security. We turn around hospital in the stadium. We have to think where all the checkpoints will be set, where our staff can get into the medical areas, how we can evacuate and transfer uh, people from the stadium to here and to Hamad. All the things we have to plan in advance. Unfortunately, in this current situation of uh, tax uh, sensitivity, we need to discuss a lot about the budget, and we are now currently on discussing that aspect. And very important, we will face exceptional circumstances in terms of weather, so we have to be ready to have a contingency plan, and I will give you more details about that. What are the hill risks that we are facing? Of course, number one, first and foremost, heat. And I will review with you just a little bit of physiology about the heat. You know that when we are running, when we are exercising, we are generating heat. This is normal, okay? But how we can control that? I'm excited. <laughs> First thing we have to discuss is there is other things to generating, other ways to generating heat. So we will receive heat for the ground, convection and radiation also from the air. So we are most of the time gaining heat. So we have to lose that heat. And to lose that internal heat, we need to perspire well and to have good sweat and evaporate well. But here in, in Qatar, we have a problem. We can have good temperature, but we can have awful, dreadful humidity. So if there is a lot of humidity, we don't evaporate, and we will have pain. We will have problems. By the way, Sebastian, thank you for helping me with all these uh, die up uh, slides. So, I will come back to this line. This line is talking about the wet bulb clip, club temperature. So I will explain you what is this later. But just to remember what is the usual situation in, in the heat. So if the athlete is running in a moderate high speed, but not too fast, but doesn't, doesn't happen anything wrong and it's under control and the athlete is fine, happy and performing well. By the moment he's pushing a little bit, it's too hot or it's too humid, he could start to have exercise associated muscle cramps. And now we know by the evidence that we, in the past we thought that this is a water loss thing or an electrolyte disbalance. We know now that this is not true, that the main problem is fatigue. but. This happened. We will face a lot of exercise muscle cramps in the athletes competing. And when we have exercise cramps, we will have performance decrease. What else? If the athletes keep pushing and push and push, and here we have to expect them to push to their boundaries, okay, there will be some of them that will start to struggle. And they start to show signs and symptoms of exercise and heat-associated 
illnesses. So the problem in that moment is that we can have not only exercise muscle cramps, most likely we will have exercise collapse, which is the most common situation, or insulin not. We will have guys that have high central core temperature, above 40, more higher than 40, and problems with the central nervous system. And by the moment we are in front of heat stroke and we are in front of a very serious life-threatening situation. We have to take this into consideration. I don't want to neglect another important aspect. Probably less frequent in elite athletes, but very, very common in massive uh, races, uh, long distance uh, ultra runs or marathons or triathlon. If the people drink too much, they can dilute too much their blood and they will go to very low concentrations of sodium and they will be in hyponatremia. That is, sometimes the clinical presentations could uh, be alike of the heat stroke and <clears throat> could be a difficult situation. So, sorry a moment. So I was, again, curious. I mentioned already the cardiac arrest. I saw that they in, uh, in Atlanta, 1996, they had, uh, they had three. So I searched on the literature, and I, faced, I found this. It's not working. Just a minute. So by the way, Dr. Jan, probably you know the first author of this. Is a good friend of you, uh, the Swedish uh, Matt uh, Borgeson. So we have to expect one cardiac arrest every half a million spectators. And we will hit almost that figure because we will go more or less 300 or 330,000 spectators. So my guess is that we could have one cardiac cardiac arrest during the competition. Hopefully not. So <clears throat> more things. We need to know what kind of medical encounters we will face. So I again go, went to the past um, data, not much on that, but I, I, get, I, could, uh, I could gather some data. So as always, we have to expect a lot of muscle skeletal problems, but important aspect, heat illnesses, skin abrasion, it's surprising how many of them, upper respiratory tract infection and other things, sometimes it's sudden uh, allergic reactions or asthma attacks, uh, metabolic disorders. For example, very common, 400 meters race, finish line, atlas collapsing. And because they are not heat stroke, exercise collapse, is they are tired, they are intoxicated of lactic acid. And this is a this usual situation. And those of us involved in athletics, we know very well. So the only thing you have to do, put in a stretch, transfer to the medical area, give them rest, a little bit of fluid, and everybody can, because if everybody panic with that, we will be transferring athletes with nothing and uh, keep, keeping ourselves too busy. So we can have these kind of things. So I searched again to the literature, and I was involved when I was in athletics in AWF in a group that we did uh, epidemiologic surveillance to the big uh, international competitions. But at AWF, we came to some conclusions. So more or less, there is 80 injuries per 1,000 registered athletes. So we have to expect here more or less 120, 160 injuries coming from the athletes. And where are the anatomic locations of those injuries? Mainly the thigh and mainly the muscle, the hamstring. So this is the most common injury in athletics. So those that are sprinters, middle distance runners, long distance runners, uh, hurdles events, they will suffer from this. Also the combined event. And we move a little bit longer, maybe uh, lower leg, uh, calf muscles, and the sin bone is the place where we have more problems. And marathon is the location number one. But the marathon, location number one is that, but uh, uh, medical condition number one is uh, blisters. So, uh, well, we have to take that into consideration. Obviously, throwing events, upper extremity, upper uh, body is the area where we will have problems. And again, overall, Athletics, remember, the thigh, the posterior thigh, the hamstrings is the medical condition number one. So, and what about the other populations, spectators and others? In spectators, we already face this problem of potential sudden cardiac arrest. arrest. But I will give you another sample to uh, illustrate what could happen. There is a VIP, and this, this is a real, it's an actual history. One VIP from an area in the world that one was, he had renal failure. So each time he flew out his country, he needed to be submitted to hemodialysis. 
So those medical teams serving the competition, they had to organize a um, renal failure team to provide the hemodialysis to these uh, VIP. So this is not usual, but this is the scenario we can face when we are d d dealing with this big competition. So I wanted to have an idea of what are these problems. Okay, risk analysis, public health problems, epidemiology. So we can discuss, and we are discussing a lot with the Ministry of Public Health, because we need them to help us with this. So we can have food and waterborne infections. So we need to do exceptional extra impact inspections in the hotel's kitchens and discuss with the food handlers and discuss with them and check that their uh, usual IDs are updated and they are doing all the processes in the kitchens that they are requested. Checking their conditioning, checking the swimming pools. There could be <coughs> colonies of Legionella on their conditioning. We can have an outbreak of Legionellosis. We also have to check all the eateries in the stadium, in the fun zone. There is a possibility of imported infections. So we can have, maybe not, well, hopefully not, but we can have malaria, we can have Zika, we can have other things like <coughs> these um, uh, exceptional uh, respiratory infections in, the, uh, in Asia. So this is important things to do as well as the pest control. And also, those team physicians coming from outside, sometimes, they use needles <coughs> or they stitch. Sorry. <coughs> so what they do? So we should help them to all that biological waste to be uh, deposited and drop on uh, appropriate containers. And I'm coming back to the heat is our concern number one. So facing the risk, we have to plan and to do mitigation of the risks. So we are discussing about this, and I will show you now what we did, the assessment of the temperatures. But we are trying to have mitigation plans for every single population, spectators, visitors, uh, athletes, uh, VIPs, everybody should receive information. And in that information, we should have some education. And for the athletes, our main concern is try to make understand the teams that these three main things they should do. Acclimatize, and they have to come earlier, or go somewhere else with, uh, and train under the heat and, and humidity. And they should do pre-cooling or per-cooling. And then, obviously, they should do good hydration. So we are insisting a lot, the teams, and we are hoping to do some research. So our temperature analysis. So we analyze not only the temperature and the humidity, and we had an average of all this, but we analyze this with bulk glob temperature. I won't go into detail because this is a complex mathematical model. But this is a very an oversimplification of what does it mean. So this index estimates a mix of the air temperature, humidity, the radiation and convection, and the wind. As I insist this is an oversimplification. But to make you understand why we use, because this has been used first time in the first Gulf War by the US Army. And then it came to sport. It has been used in sport for long. And the American College of Sport Medicine came out with this uh, flat coded system. So we identify areas of higher risk, the maximum risk, high risk, not that much, and less risk. And when we are saying this, is that we could be in a situation where we should consider and recommend as the medical people, maybe we have to cancel the event. And please, again, don't panic. Don't go away. This is a very busy slide, I know. But what we do is we get uh, external information and help from two guys from the US. Douglas Casa, that he wrote a lot of papers on heat stroke, and one meteorologist that is working with him, Andrew Granston. Andrew Granston is an exceptional guy, a very smart guy. So he got access to the NASA, yes, the National State Agency from the US. 25 years historical retrospective data. Day by day, hour by hour. So he could estimate the wild bulk club temperature in Doha. So we transferred this to the average, to the maximum values, to the minimum, and to average plus one standard deviation. And remember, I mentioned already that we are always considering the worst case scenario. So what is the worst case scenario? OK, we have maximum values of WVGT. And we will see that at the starting of the marathon, we will be in the black coat area. And not only that, the whole day, 
at that time, and also at night, at the time of the competition is planned, we could have this. I am not saying it is, will happen. I am saying this, this could happen, and we have to be ready for this. And this is a very uh, exceptional circumstance, and we have to be ready for that. So the analysis of the risk can be converted in this uh, x, y chart, and we can place in more or less the estimation of the severity and li likelihood of each event, and we come to this more or less uh, estimation. And coming back to the heat, the risk mitigation number one is prevention. And we should come back again and tell the athletes, acclimatize, place. And we are offering them to come here. And again, thank you, Sebastian, for all your job in this area. So, but there are other risks we have to face. Some of them are very unusual. And that's why they are here as rare. But they can be, and if they are, they are happening, we have to know what to do. So the plan is, OK, mitigate the risk. But when this is happening, we should have <clears throat> a plan prepared of what to do. And we are having plans for every single of this. Learnings from past medical care provision. Taking care of the last, or taking into account the last big, big, big uh, event that published things, uh, London 2022, uh, sorry, 2012, we have these important conclusions that the relationship with other organizations has to be very good because if you start to have difficulties that leads to inefficiencies and you will be in trouble and also a very important thing that i'm afraid we are already doing and we are doing wrong that is overestimation of the demand and i think probably in my estimation that i showed you before that 3,000 medical encounters can be a little bit of overestimation but i think we should be ready for that i think it's better to overestimate a little bit so, what other things we are doing? Okay, I already mentioned, good team, highly professional people with multiple uh, backgrounds, uh, balanced people, balanced staff, so we should have enough doctors, enough physiotherapists, enough massage, enough uh, nutritionists, uh, nurses, administrative staff. There's a lot of people involved and we should have a balance of that. We should educate all the populations involved. And this is part of the mitigation plan and discussion about the heat, risks, and all that things. Also, um, we are organizing training for all the volunteers. So I will discuss later, and I will mention the volunteers thing, but all the volunteers need to have some retraining, some updates on the last uh, things, and also uh, the, some of the common situation in athletics. So we have our staff well trained. So very important to have the clinics located in the right place with a good setup and good layout. So we are discussing all with LOC. Also, uh, I mentioned already the medical equipment, medical devices. So for instance, we are planning to buy extra rectal thermometers, extra automat external defibrillators, because we will need all that. We are more, almost done with the operational plan, but now the operational plan has to have a time planning and an implementation plan, and we are working on that. And we are lucky to have international advisors. So Paul Distra, that is working very closely with me because he's the deputy medical director. We have a long history of uh, participating in athletics. We have some close friends from Australia, uh, England, US, uh, France, Spain, and we asked all of them about our operational plan. And they are giving us uh, their input, so we are improving our operational plan. Medical guidelines, we will have medical guidelines for everything. So an athlete drops in the stadium, what to do? An athlete uh, consults in the hotel about an um, urgent thing, what to do? How to transfer to the Hamad or whatever. So we will have guidelines for everything. You have to test your team. You have to do rehearsals. And very important for us, we will have the opportunity during the ASEAN Athletic Championships next April to test the whole system in the stadium. We won't have that opportunity for Cornish. What we are discussing is organize a specific rehearsals for Cornish. Because we want on the 27th September to have the medical team in the Cornish to work 100% well. And we need to test that. And we need to do rehearsals. And I mentioned already contingency plan. And we are discussing this with WAF. And WAF came last week and we discussed with them about the possibilities, maybe, let's say, postponing the marathon. I don't, I don't want to go into much detail. OK, last aspect of what to organize this massive operation. 
First of all, I have to acknowledge and thank the whole aspect of the whole administration for the support. So we have a medical committee with the chief medical officer involved. We have uh, the here present DG supporting a lot, as well as the CEO. So, so this is basic. So we need the upper management to help us and to work together with us. We have a steering committee, and we have here Dr. Khalid Hassoun that is there. I saw also David Ren, David Montilli that is in the back, uh, Paul, Emin Ergen, Faisa Jones, uh, Joan Lambert, and uh, Life and Sanfaz. So if I miss anybody, sorry. We have a regular uh, monthly meeting to review the situation of all our strategy. And this is very important to have the involvement or several areas. I missed uh, Mike uh, Sareski is somewhere, so I don't want to miss anybody. Very important, as I said, also the participation of all the departments. So we have a very nice support of all the heads of the departments. And I, as I said, all Aspetar is involved. And all Aspetar has to be involved because the figures are massive. We have very exceptional support of national sport medicine program in terms of project management. I must uh, here say once again that David Ren and David Tilly, they are doing an exceptional job. And just some things to speed up for the final uh, slides. I already mentioned the importance of the time planning. Uh, follow up. So it's not only that you set your deadlines, you should have a follow up of who is uh, expecting to do what and when, because if you don't follow your type planning, you are lost. Uh, so you have to implement the plans. Uh, there is administrative issues. So, for instance, uh, all of you that will come to help us, you need to have uh, the appropriate accreditation, the right rights to go to the right places. So you don't have the accreditation number five with the color green, if it is that the case, you won't be able to access the field of play or you won't be able to access the medical area. So we have to visit that together with the LOC. Obviously, I mentioned the medical equipment, the devices, the medicines we need. And we need to have a procurement plan because this is coming in April, so we have to be ready for April ASEAN Championships. And also, we have to have all the consumers we need for September. And remember that we will have seven clinics working at the same time in the city, so we have to multiply almost seven times for some of the items. Those involved on you, when you will be in a hotel working from uh, 7 a.m. until midday or from the midday until night, you should receive food, you should have a easy local transportation, or you should have an access to your private uh, transportation. So all these things we have to uh, consider, review, plan, discuss, etc. Talking about recruitment, I will invite you all to come and help us. You will receive most likely today an email, and we will invite you to volunteer for this, because we need the whole aspect of to contribute. That much that we need up to 250 staff, because we need doctors, nurses, Physiotherapists, massage uh, therapists, uh, nurses, again I said, uh, receptionists, uh, DSOs, administrative staff, pharmacists, nutritionists. We need a lot of people involved. So we need all you to volunteer and come and help us. Because altogether we will be 600. So with some, those of us who are involved with the Atlas K, plus those that will be involved with the uh, BIP or the media, so we need 600 people altogether. This is massive. Never before we had that much in a competition. So just to, send, to end up, I want to draw these two main res resumes from the experience in London. So again, we have to build relationships. We have to bridge gaps. We have to do a sustainable a relationship with other uh, organizations so we can give some kind, some kind of legacy for the future for other competitions, mainly thinking about the FIFA World Cup. And also, it's important, again I said, so now we are working very well with um, uh, Qatar Crescent, with Hamad, but we still we need to improve our relationship because there are some aspects of the exceptional circumstances of this competition, the night events, the heat, that we have to strengthen all that. I will want you to show this short video. Again, no sound. This is Mutas Barsim, last July, Hungary, trying world record. This is his first attempt to world record, 2002 2 meters, 46 centimeters. Unfortunately, in the second attempt, he sprained his ankle and uh, broke one of his bones 
and uh, needed uh, surgery. So we are looking for him to recover soon, a speedy recovery for him, and he will hopefully be here with us in uh, uh, next year and competing and winning the, the world. And that's it. Thank you very much. Shukran. And I will be happy to take questions now.